on weekly. Make sure you peep it. Mad King stayed on my best kept secret. Ain't nothing to it but to do it, so do it. Introduce it. The gang in my cooling. We be on the neck getting foolish. Live on the set with the gang in my coolie. I'm just cooling. Cooling with the gang. Cooling with the gang. Coolie in the gang. We be on the neck getting foolish. Live on the set with the gang in my coolie. I'm just cooling. Cooling with the gang. Cooling with the gang. Coolie in the gang. You are tuned into the Cooley and the Gang Show on Blockworks Radio. Am I moving funny? We there? Yeah. How y'all doing? What's popping, people? What it do? What it do? What's up, fam? I had a whole lot going on over here. Y'all don't be real jipper when we come on. Y'all realize? Y'all just be like, yeah. Fuck it, though. Okay. It's all we, good. Look the, <laughs> we look at the same people every Tuesday. What do you want? You <laughs> every want to call Tuesday. <laughs> Give me something same. new to look at on Tuesday. <laughs> then I can get excited. You can't get excited looking over here, mate. Probably what the problem is. What it, I need some new shit to look at. I'm trying. I'm sorry, Mac. I love y'all, but I'm tired of looking at y'all asses every Tuesday. We added Linnea. That I oh, thank I'm God. <laughs> <laughs> what you what? Oh, this all good. Good. I, I know what I know what <laughs> Mac Mary's talking about. So I know. Let's put some I'm just slack. all right. Let me let me say it. Let me be nice about it. Okay. Let me be a good girl. Yeah. I'm just saying, <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> I figured. You are a mess. You ain't had to do that, Mac. And why are he going to sit there and go off the screen? How is the host gone? He feels some people. type of way. Well, then he need to take it out on the slowpoke who driving. <laughs> Look, I don't want no, I don't want no problems. <laughs> don't like, I don't, no. Yeah, I don't want no problems. Please, just, 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 I'm gonna mind my business. But no, he, just yeah. stole, he just stole Carlos' last name. Okay, yeah, Rodriguez. Whatever. See, see that? Oh. <laughs> he see that what? Is all you got? I like, what that's that? See that? What the fuck else you gonna say? Right back out. Yeah, just Pop see that? Pop see that? <laughs> no, I ain't gonna say nothing at all. So, yo, are you How's on your way are you on your way? No, home? I ain't on the way home. I'm so on my you, way to. So, so y'all know what that mean. Y'all know what that mean, right? He go, at seven o'clock, he off the show. Okay, there y'all go. Okay, everybody know what that means. I right, so work. Good. I was a I good. work. We good. I did some work, y'all. Yeah, well, let me, let me, let me uh, let y'all know. I'm gonna be in and out. I'm still working, so I will be in and out myself. I'm not. So, I'm Matt, not Matt, Matt, we know where to find you, no. Matt. We can look see, down Matt, and see that you already know here. that. Yeah, Mac, we know that because you submitted your letter to HR. To make sure that you have full coverage, your FMLA, you good. We talking about the one who be in the show. He start up shit, he drop a bomb, and then he just came like, off the show. He be out seven o'clock, and he gonna eat his dinner before he leaves. There you that's go. Lighting. That's that's the new phrase for the week. Gaslighting. Well, um, <laughs> gaslighting then dip. <laughs> Before I jump on you, know he's shit, and then he rolls out all the time. Y'all know that. Yes, yes, he does. I hope I hope all of y'all had a good week. Um, oh yes. Really, I really, really do. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's Black History Month. Yay! And just before the show, I got this article sent to me. Uh uh-uh. uh Black History Month is every month for me. I hear blackie, you, brother. Blackie, blackie, blackie. Is this looking like I think it's going on? I don't know. Oh, oh yeah. Know. Oh, like that. What the fuck is I going was on? Crack and syringe. I said, oh no. <laughs> yeah, I think. <laughs> nice. I think. Uh, I saw crack and syringe. I was like, that might have been a Bing Bong dude. <laughs> I think <laughs> the government is out to get me today. They're trying to save them. <laughs> Trying to save them. Mm-hmm. Everybody know we got that cousin that's on that stuff. They were yeah. Oh my goodness! They, yeah, the screen, 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 is, uh, they the were screen share is definitely not working today. 
Oh, hmm? wow. But um, it was an article in Black Enterprise, and it says Biden administration to fund the distribution of crack pipes and syringes to promote racial equity. What? Hmm? Wait a minute. Oh, I God, hear... God, hear me. The Biden no. administration to fund the distribution of crack pipes and syringes to promote racial equity. So are they going to get a, a black people the same syringes that the white people get? <laughs> they got some shit that reusable and shit. But the white people get the reusable syringes. Low poke. Low poke came off a of mute, y'all. Make sure that we let him speak now. He, he probably had a red light. So let go. So I don't know. I don't. I don't know where the racial equity would come in as far as that's concerned. That should sound a little crazy, but, but I've been saying wild shit for a long time now. People just conveniently ignore that shit. But I like what Brandon say all the time. Had it been Trump, people would have fell out their fucking chair and had a whole lot to say. But anyway, you do know that probably about ten or fifteen years ago, they were handing out syringes anyway. Yeah, they were. The, the crack, the crack pipe shit is 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 different different and then to add on racial equity to that that's that should sound a little strange to me what what exactly what exactly does that mean what's your goal? i mean hmm? racial equity with crack and syringes what, what the fuck are you talking about that's they're gonna make sure they get an equal amount as the white people <laughs> you ain't got to needles no more you gonna have your black people ain't gotta share needles no more you get your own but you know what though this goes back to what we talked about. What was that last week or week before last? When we talked about the crack pen mm -hmm. and how how he was talking about how they got to try to figure out how to how to push this to the community first before they actually legalize it or start doing it. So it's like little stupid shit like this that they'll do just to see how people respond to it. And if they respond in a favorable way, then they gonna say, "Oh damn, we can go ahead and give them the crack pen now. They they cool with this." <laughs> yes, yeah, they don't mind. So. um uh, one part of the article says starting this made a harm reduction program will provide taxpayer funds to nonprofits and local governments that work to make drug use safer for addicts. The free beacon reports overseen by the Department of Health and Human Resource and Human Services. The grants will be allocated towards smoking kits slash supplies that will provide pipes for users to smoke crack cocaine, crystal methamphetamine and any illicit substance. I'll tell you this. So you gotta get I your mean, uh, this is crazy. Your smoking kit. <laughs> your, your smoking kit. <laughs> I'll tell you this. Wow. I'm not I'm not a I'm not an advocate for uh um helping to destroy the community, but for those people who who don't give a fuck, there's an opportunity for you to make money because they're gonna need uh out what is it called, outreaches to actually mm -hmm. distribute that shit. So you can get a part of that grant money. It's a possibility you can get some of that grant money. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, wow, that was just so but the thing about it, you using the taxpayers' money, right? Like, like, if you decide to get high, you're responsible for your own shit. Pretty much. Apparently mm. not. Fuck it. Are they gonna use taxpayer money to um help help me get some douce here and there? Nah. <laughs> nah, they mean, not some douce. So it's, and that, it just goes. It just goes to my theory, anyway. That all What's they try to kill people off. That's mm -hmm. all they try to do: get the population under a certain amount, so they can start really controlling it. Yeah. Should they already started it? Know how, how they started? It? Yeah. How they started? Oh, with the vaccine. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. You're all welcome. That train ain't never late. We ain't <laughs> After about another 25 years, we ain't gonna have no black folk no more. <laughs> you say, look, look at the black men get locked up, and then you got all of the ones becoming gay. That's gay. And then you got the ones getting killed by the police. Then you got the ones getting killed by other black men. Then you got the ones dying from the COVID and the vaccines, and now you got crack and shit. They want to erase our, our, our asses for show. Yeah, but it just shows, just like uh, the brother that was on here the other day said, it's a problem with humanity. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. way that we do shit, the stuff that we talk about, the, the stuff that, that's even being pushed to, to people, period. Not just black people, white people too. Mm -hmm. The shit that's just being pushed out to the community is crazy. The fact that somebody feels comfortable with saying we're going to give this out for racial equity 
lets you know that we have reached an all-time low. Like, the way that people think about shit and the way that they look at shit is, is mm -hmm. beyond understandable. Mm -hmm. Well. <sighs> Trying to cut down the population by any means necessary. I'm trying to see get some more tidbits so that y'all so that's basically how it's going like i say overseen by the department of health um and human resources the grants will alloc will be allocated so all the grants are going to i guess programs that were, so a friend of mine his argument was <laughs> when uh they posted this in the group chat mm -hmm. and uh you all let me know how you feel about it mm -hmm. He said, do people really think that these programs started under Biden? You have to look where the program started. All he's doing is funding what's already been funded. So is it a, is it a, so is it a yay or nay for y'all on this? Like, or do you even care? What would ever happen to prevention, drug prevention, trying to get people off the shit? Right. It's, too, it's too hard to prevent. So you might as well just make it easy and safer, I guess. So that's like, telling, that's that's like telling your children, don't touch the stove because it's hot. Right. And, and and instead of, you know, fucking them listening. Yeah, instead of them listening or you kind of doing something to protect it, you kind of just make it easier but safer. So they're gonna give them the tools. Like give them a pie holder and say, if you want to touch the flame, just put this pie holder on your hand. It's all good then. Just don't mm -hmm. touch it with your bare hand. Like this is the thing, they're giving them the tools to get high, but they still mm -hmm. need a place to go get the drugs. So are they gonna have a new Amsterdam or some shit like that? Right, an open drug area, or are you still gonna lock the motherfuckers up that's selling them the crack after you gave them the free pipes and shit? The clean, the new clean pipes. Right, they gonna still lock their ass up. They gonna still lock them up because the government haven't figured out how to get tax money out of it. But see, like I said, mm -hmm. this like little stuff like this is how they segue into starting to peddle those types of drugs and make and legalize them because they're saying, well, shit, if you're gonna let us give you out crack pipes, then we might as well go ahead and sell crack too. I mean, if you're okay with that, you might as well be okay with the other side. Shit, what's the purpose yeah. of me giving you uh, a utensil without the shit to put in it? That makes sense. Might as well. That's part of the kit. Right. I'm thinking that's what it should be, a part of the kit. Lord. You, could, you already got an ace in there. That's what I'm about to say. I already got a, a picture in my head of how that's looking. They got the, got the little meat presentation and crap. I'm like, Lord. Shit, and that, that shit probably better. You know, they, they probably getting that shit from uh, Columbia and all kinds of... They're getting the, the good stuff from Columbia. Good stuff, the raw mm -hmm. stuff. And make sure that... Probably even, probably even better in a nice, clean pipe, too. Mm-hmm. Wow. Life is over. Life is fucking over. It's fucking over. Pack shit up. It's all over. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fucking done, son. So it's, it's crazy, you know. It's, it's, it's just craziness, and it gets worse and worse every year. The things that the things that we see on TV, the stuff that's being said, the the, the conversations that's being had. I remember we were talking about how. Um, so in the beginning, people were saying nobody was more disrespected than uh, President Obama, right? Mm -hmm. Then we saw Trump come come in, and they was cutting out little fucking dolls and shit. And, and and uh making a Cheeto man with the fucking wig on and all of them kind of shit, right? Yeah. Now, here we go. Did you see the meme? And I'm gonna tell you this this was the funniest meme I've seen with Joe Biden. When that nigga fell down the fucking flight of, down the uh plane step show. Yeah. Looked like a nigga kicked him down the steps and yo <laughs> yo fell down the steps. <laughs> that definitely was some funny shit. But seriously, Look but at how good, but you know technology also is the bad is is like the devil yeah. of it all because I feel like when we were coming up, if we would have had access to that shit, we would have been doing it too, but right. we didn't right. because right. we have social media and everything is like right at our fingertips because of technology. Like immediately, when something happens, you can go right to your phone and make it public. You you don't have to wait hmm. to look, tune in to the news at nine ten o'clock at night to find out what the fuck happened. You know right then and there, so. It's just funny because it's, it's never going to end. It is going to keep elevating, like you said, constantly. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. Uh, another article I saw, and and of course today when I had some good videos, um, I don't know what's up. The screen share is doing that little crazy uh, fucking uh, green and red color. Um, 
Kate, our guess is she said life uncensored, anything goes. Mm. I should have I should have saved it. I took her um I took her line before she came in. But we got we're about to bring her in um right after this article. So um Vice had an article for you see four men have been charged in the fentanyl overdose of uh, Michael K. Williams. Omar yes. Hawaii, you see um they charged four men in that. Um how do you even come up with a, how, how do you come up with that charge? Like they I can old people involved in the drug, like I don't know. But, but it says four men have been charged their involvement in dealing dr- in dealing drugs to the wire actor Michael K. Williams, which ultimately led to his overdose death. A federal mm-hmm. prosecutor told reporters the four defendants were charged on Tuesday in New York for involvement in distributing the dr- distributing the drugs, according to the AP. Authorities mm-hmm. allege that the men continue to deal drugs in broad daylight and even after Williams' death. Williams, 54, died from acute drug intoxic- intoxication after taking fentanyl lace heroin and suffering from an accidental overdose. Mm-mm. I still don't believe he actually was getting high. I think somebody set his ass up. <sighs> I think somebody really set his ass up, man. Think so? Yeah. And why, why would they think that? Why, why would a drug dealer stop selling drugs after? Right. I don't understand why they thought they was gonna stop selling. Like they were surprised that the <laughs> niggas went back outside and sold more drugs. Mm-hmm. At the same time, they sold the first set of drugs. Like I don't understand what the fuck people be thinking about. But anyway, I digress. Um, mm-hmm. there's enough drug talk. I think we didn't got enough felonies for tonight. Oh, I thought I let the <laughs> professor <in> <laughs> just now. <laughs> Genie's um, man. <laughs> God damn. Oh, my buttons is all slow. So, um, Kay, you ready? You ready? You ready? Yo, put me in now. Come on, Mike. Hey, shit. Hit the button. Oh, hold on. I'm trying to put my headphones in. All right. So, our special guest is here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I had to see how uh, that was uh, my nice transition. Um, Kenya K. Croft. First of all, she already has the name of a star. Every time I, I, I typed it and wrote it, I was like, oh, yeah, this is just celebrity written all over it. So um, she is the owner of Mia Bella Body Sculpting Boutique Studio in Houston, Texas. And she's also a podcast host, just like us. And she has decided to show some love to the Cooley in the Gang show. Hey, K. Hey. <laughs> hey, guys. How are you doing? Hey, K. We got to put you, we got to uh, get you on the, the big screen. Okay. Uh, now, listen, y'all. Y'all know heroin mixed with fentanyl is deadly. You cannot mix heroin with fentanyl. It is deadly. That's the reason why they go into jail. 100%. <laughs> but I'm like, how did they, how do you get full? So I guess they just locked the whole ring up. Whoever was out there with them when I, I guess. But, and it's crazy, like, how much fentanyl it take, like, Whatever, if that commercial was true, like it doesn't even take that much fentanyl to really like to do it. Like this crazy. No, fentanyl is like like the codeine of it's like a hundred times. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what you're gonna get from codeine? But technically, any chemist, anyone who's mixing this stuff together, it clearly reads like you cannot mix fentanyl with heroin. If so, it is a deadly concoction. Hence, that's why they're up for murder. Period. And all that and all that says for a drug user is, oh, I need that. <laughs> I mean, Wait, like, that's, that's, that's what they search for. Why couldn't it be a chemistry student? Why couldn't it be a chemistry student? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So how you doing tonight? We are good. How are you? How are things? Okay. What's you been like? What's the weather? What's what the what was the weather? Oh, like? it was um, I think 60 today. Yeah, like 60. Oh, well. Jealous. Mm-hmm. I, I know, know man. Right? I'm, I'm sending Sunny all the way. I'm sending Sunny <laughs> out right now. We'll, we'll, get, it. we'll get it. It's this morning weather. We'll get it. So I'm an hour behind you guys. So it's still sun outside. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm keeping this. Still jealous. I know she's still stunting on us all the way. She was saying it's warm and sunny. And it's yeah, all the sun is sixty degrees. Oh, yeah. I said I am. Bringing it to you guys. I'm sharing it with you. I need all of it for real today. Exactly. I need all of it too, right? 
let me bring this gray down so I can actually get you guys on. This I don't table. even know what it, I, like I'll, we always like talking to strong black entrepreneurs. So I'm going to start with the body sculpting because I, I saw some videos. Okay. Oh, it, looks like, it looked like it's literally. Is it a safer means than I don't want to compare it to surgery, but is it should you start with a sculpt yeah, first and if that doesn't is. work? Then like so what is the sculpting like? What are the benefits of sculpting over other things? So sculpting is all about fat reduction, right? So technically, and, and I've told people because I have some clients that were like on the fence with getting the um the plastic surgery, and I'm like, regardless of what process you go through you still have to get sculpted. Like everyone who gets on that table with a plastic surgeon, they cut things away. When you come back, you still have to be sculpted by a massage therapist who's going to get all the inflammation. You got to go through a series of, um, you know, massages and you have to wear compression garments. that's going to help you with sculpting your body. Your body can be sculpted, period. So I tell people like it's the same, in so many different ways, the only difference is you're not going through surgery. You don't have any cuts. You don't have any pain. You don't have any downtime. Um, and at the end of the day, both both sides of the coin, you still have to be healthy. You still got to eat right. You still got to work out if you want to keep those gains that you get. So either path, when people say, oh, the non-invasive side is a slower side, baby, no, it's not. If you eat right, you work out, you do what you're supposed to do, you know, there's only so much you're going to be able to hit at the gym because you can't target. But I'm able to come in with my blaster, start hitting those abs, those sides, those hips, hit that cellulite. I mean, it's the key. And and uh, plastic surgery does not do anything with cellulite, period. It does not do anything with cellulite. And if you have loose skin, unless you get that skin cut off, they do not have any skin tightening whatsoever. So we're able to help you along your journey. You need to tighten up while you're losing weight. You don't want to lose all the weight and then tighten up. You want to like tighten that thing up, you know, as you go so you can snap back like like that. So that's what we do over here. Can I ask you a question? Yes, ma'am. Do you use cavitation as a part of your sculpting method? I do. I use cavitation. I use RF. I use laser. I use everything that you could think of. Um, I use wood therapy. I do a lot of that, particularly when it comes to my butt lifts, uh, making sure everything sits really nice and tight. Um, you know, that's that's the key to everything is to make sure we hit all of that. And um, when it comes to my ingredients, hold on a second. I think I'm having a little bit of internet trouble. But when it comes to the ingredients, like for my gel, because I'm sure if you've seen anybody who's used it, we use sea moss as our conductive gel. And you guys know, see, anything that person puts on your skin, when we cavitate and use those lasers, it literally absorbs into your skin. And so the sea moss is a great way for us to really tighten up that skin, nourish it along the way that you wouldn't necessarily get any other way. If you were just getting regular surgery, you'd just be putting it on the top of your stomach. But that cavitation and that RF sends all that stuff right down at the meeker skin. Let's get this. So you, you mentioned wood therapy. A lot of people don't understand what that is. Mm -hmm. Can you describe the benefits of wood therapy along with like doing the cavitation and things like that? Definitely. So the good thing about wood therapy is about number one, circulation. Um, it also helps with inflammation. A lot of times people gain weight. If you gain five pounds, more than likely it's water, right? And so we want to make sure that we're getting all of that water out of your body, helping your body to circulate much better. It helps with carving and shaping the body. Perfect example. You know, you got to roll that dough, right? When you're baking bread and pies and all of those things, that is what we do, right, to someone's body. It literally is rolling and sculpting and shaping and kind of making sure that we break up those fat deposits and that we kind of tighten the skin as we go. But circulation is very key, pushing out all of those toxins in your out of your body so that you can just have like, you know, you can just feel good because it's nothing like feeling light and free. That's key. And um, I also say a lot of times people are like, oh, body sculpting, body sculpting. Let me tell you something. 
Africans have been body sculpting forever. Asians have been body sculpting forever. Colombians, Indians, they have been body sculpting forever. Black people have been body sculpting in two major ways. We shape them babies' heads when they come out, okay? Mm -hmm. Y'all know I'm talking about babies' heads in all sorts of kinds of ways. Yeah. And them grandmamas do not play. They make sure they get that baby head nice and round. <laughs> and, you know, another thing we do is we shape them babies' noses. I remember my grandmother, the whole time I was growing up, she would always do like this. And I'm like, what is she doing to my nose? So y'all see this little, like, almost Michael Jackson nose, the thing my grandma gave this to me, right? <laughs> but this is really, you know, that's body sculpting when you really think about it. All of this shaping and forming with your hands and manipulating it with oils and all the other stuff, that's body sculpting. So we have a question in the room. I was about to say, I don't so, want to throw nothing else out there and get in trouble. Right. And Rich says, how many male clients do you have? Right. Okay, so you have to go to my Instagram, really and truly, body, body by Mia Bella um, on Instagram. I actually have more male clients than I have female clients, and I'm not going to lie. You can see uh, my pictures. Most of my clients are men, and that ab work, that side work in the back. That's basically what I do for them the entire time. Oh, they so, are just um, for the I brand. love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have no value. I was about to say, they probably I to say, I want to get rubbed down by her. Let me have a rub. Right. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Don't hurt if you have a beautiful woman. And then, yeah. or you got a beautiful yeah. woman rubbing all on you. Okay. <laughs> And look, I offer I offer uh, foot baths for you know for all my clients. That's a service I do reflexology. So you know the men they come in. I have the milk and I like wash their feet and clean their feet and scrub their feet and uh, do the hot rocks and uh, literally do re reflexology for the next. It's an hour session. So a lot of my clients are definitely men. Go on the page and you'll see people like. Why you got all these men on here? I'm like, I got to take ladies off of all my literature and kind of mix it up because I have, I'm going to say 60% men and 40% women. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's crazy. I would have never. Yeah. yeah. No. All ab work. They want their abs structured. You know, mm -hmm. they want their back. And then I do have, you know, some people who are, of, you know, um, of the LBGT community who um, transgender and all those other things that want other things done. And so this really helps, you know, that like, like things, so like things, that, like things sculpted. Um, yeah, sculpting, butt lifts, breast lifts, you know what I'm saying? All those things that, cause you know, it's so, it's so many, you can't just go anywhere and everywhere. And I'm the type of person that like, whatever is your thing is your thing. I'm not here to judge you. That's for God to handle all of it. So I create a very welcome, you know, environment. And, um, you know, everybody come through the door, but I love it. It's, it's great. It's quick. And um, it accommodates because I'm open to like 11 o'clock at night. I'll, listen, if somebody called me and was like, look, I was on the graveyard shift. Well, I was on the 12, you know, I got off at 12 o'clock. Like, can I come to you? And if I have an opening, I'll be like, come through. You know, what is it going to hurt? Money is money, right? <laughs> money green. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And my clients, their schedules, you know, you got to you got to accommodate people. That's one of the things I think that um, that COVID really taught us. Right. It's that the more you're able to accommodate your customer, the better you're going to be able to be in business for people who were like, oh, my, my hours are from eight to five. Was it big red? My office hours are from eight uh -huh. to five. You mm -hmm. want to lose money because don't nobody got time for that. You know, people are working during those hours. So how can they manage and dedicate an hour to sometimes two hours right. or something like that? Yeah, exactly. So this gives people time to go home, cook dinner, put those kids to bed, do whatever they need to do. And they can just come through and get their services and just go ahead and leave. So wow. I think that the scheduling really kind of, you know, helps people. But yeah, so your answer to the question is I have lots of men that are my clients. All right, we have another question. And I only do body sculpted, just to tell you. That yeah, all don't y'all get no crazy ideas. I'm about to say. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't trying to start nothing yeah. here. Um, for some people, a touch, a little sculpt is just enough. Yeah. 
So, you know, what? I use gloves. I purposely use gloves because I can, you know, not use gloves, but I purposely uh, use gloves just to avoid the touch. That intimate, that mm -hmm. intimate touch. Mm -hmm. the energy, that's energy exchange. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, because mm -hmm. those warm hands get on there, they look up at you. It's gonna be like, yeah, my wow. yeah. 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 yeah, and it's all wet, the gel and all the other stuff, and then the oils she and the milk. She said all right, y'all gotta uh, y'all keep going. I gotta refresh. I'll be back in the room. The <laughs> show don't stop though. Mayberry, you in okay. charge. Well, there's another question. There's another question that we got in the room from Ike Carter. Are most of your um, clients like men, like athletes or gym rats? Right. So technically, I have a little of everything. I have a lot of um, men who go to the gym occasionally. And then I have some that go to the gym, you know, pretty regularly, but they're not getting um, the fat reduction in some of the areas that they want. Right. Because you can't spot reduce fat in the gym so a lot of them come um they get red light therapy because sometimes they have like muscle aches and pains and things and they want to really kind of like get their muscles recuperating quicker um but most of them are not like in their 20s most of them are like 35 and up the oldest is like 55 so that's pretty much that range but i'm hearing a lot of them talking about their summer bodies but i'm like Y'all might need to come a little often because, you know, summer is in March here in Houston, right? right? For you. That's what for I'm me, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Wait a minute. yeah. So are, there, are, there time, are there time frames associated with it? Because you, you yeah. see a lot of people talking about, you know, body sculpting, cavitation. And you mentioned earlier, you know, people being impatient as it relates to, they want a quick fix. A quick fix yeah, is, hey, I'm gonna go and get surgery versus the amount of sessions and time that it's gonna take to, to yeah. actually sculpt. Um, how long is it usually necessary for sessions? Like, is it six weeks, eight weeks for your, for your sessions? So, you know, it really varies according to like what the person's trouble spot is, right? If someone comes in and they have more of, um, say a woman comes in and her abdomen, she has more sagging skin. That takes a little bit more to tighten, a little bit time to get through because you have to tighten that skin up, right? You really have to go hard with tightening that skin. But someone who just has some like, um, you know, a little fat on their flanks or just want to get a little roll off their back, that's something that can be done pretty quickly. I would say within four sessions, we should be able to get that out of the way. But that's only if they follow a good diet. All of those carbs, like I give people an eating plan. They can easily come and get my eating plan. And I'm on, you know, I follow a low carb, all that rice bread, pasta, that goes literally right back where I took the fat out because it's high starch and all of that turns into sugar. So I need your body to kind of be in a burning state for most of the time. And that means high protein, you know, suitable carbs that's not going to go to your bloodstream very quickly. Like uh, you can do black rice, you can do wild rice, you can, you can do um, sweet potatoes, things like that. But I really need you to not do a lot of alcohol. If you're going to do alcohol, go with tequila and vodka. It doesn't have all that sugar in there. I mean, I hate to say it for my Hennessy drinkers and my grandma yay drinkers and margaritas, like, you have literally taken in your calories for today for the day. And all of that sugar just gets stored in your body, which then causes inflammation and bloating. And now we're back at square one. So vodka and tequila, y'all. Just just yeah. let y'all know. But I was, <laughs> but I was gonna ask, is it better for the clients? Because I know I do intermittent fasting. So I mm -hmm. usually fast about uh, 16 hours every day. So I don't, so my first meal wouldn't be till 12. So would that mm -hmm. help with the sessions? No, no, not at all. I mean, how you eat, you do intermittent fast and someone else could, you know, just eat throughout the day, but cut it off at a certain time where, um, just eat regularly, period. It has everything to do with the amount of calories that you're putting in your body. So once you, you put those calories in, in five hours, 10 hours, 12 hours, it's truly, you know, up to you because I need you to um, I need you to be in a burning mode where you have a good sense of what your calories look like. 
Okay. Now it's not required, but if you want to see faster results, then I'm saying you have to already be in a position where you are burning calories at a really good rate. And that means you're not taking in all these calories because okay. it's 80% of your diet. You know what I'm saying? Like at the end of the day, it's 80% of your diet. Whether you go to the gym five days a week or you go to the gym two days a week, your diet is 80% of your weight loss efforts in your body. Period. I have one more question. Mm -hmm. With, you hear a lot of people that they'll come from having like procedures done and then they say, hey, you have to immediately get body sculpting. And then you have some people that, that don't go through body sculpting. What is your recommendation from that perspective? So the plastic surgeon is going to tell you you have to go through body sculpting, but you have to go to someone who's trained in lymphatic drainage. Because your body, you know, you're swelling up every single day, which is one of the reasons why they have to wear their compression garment. Fajas are not like waist trainers, right? They really are set to be able to help your body compress. And that compression actually pushes your organs in your body. People don't know that waist trainers and Fajas both, they actually push your organs in your body. So you got to be very careful with how tight you have those things. <laughs> You have to be, they literally remove the liquid from your body, which is why people who go through plastic surgery have drain holes. If those drain holes get plugged up, somebody has to open them. And it's not going to be the doctor. It's going to be that massage therapist who's going to open up those drain holes. And you're going to see them with that little syringe getting that fluid out of their body. So you have to keep pushing it because your lymphatic drainage system alone is overwhelmed. It cannot handle that much. It has to be done with the system. So if someone gets work done and they don't go get those massages and they don't, you know, get that body sculpting done, one, they're going to hate the way their body look. Mm -hmm. You want, you're going to look not, you're not going to look good at all. Your body shape is not going to look good. And second, you can really have infections and other things because your body have to, have to remove those toxins, all that fat and stuff that's just sitting in your body it has to be removed, period. So they're going to make some money. Everybody think May May and Kay look like cousins. And I'm going to say this. And I'm going to tell you something. If y'all are going to sit there and measure me up to somebody, thank God she is gorgeous. So, yes. That is my family. She live in Texas, y'all. Yes. Yes. Come through. Come through and get the family discount. Come on, girl. So so not so not only so so how long have you so how long have you been doing body sculpting? Okay. So I've been doing body sculpting for two and a half years. But now my background, I used to run a massage therapy program, right? And so I really got interested in aesthetics and massage therapy a very long time ago, but I wanted to train people so that they could do the body work. Plus, I had already went to school for way too long um, to have to start all over from scratch. And I was like, until there is a point where I can enter into the market, do the work that I love and I know that I could do, then like I'm going to wait for that. And it came around and it was like medical aesthetics became a thing. And so because I understand uh, A&P, right, anatomy and physiology, I'm really good with chemistry Um you know, I'm strong when it comes to business. It was just like, oh, how can we yeah. really make this work? Because I know that this body can be sculpted in like a 50 million different ways. I just need to make sure I get the training. I have the time and I have the effort to put it back it. But it's been two and a half years, but I've been in the massage therapy industry, as you can say, for about since 2010. So that mm -hmm. makes it what, 11 total years? Yeah. Yeah. And your training right, so. and your training currently, do you have like a school or an academy that you're you're no. running right now with certification? Mm -hmm. I'm not involved in the schools at all anymore. My biggest thing is about providing personal care. I really want to grow my business and provide personal care. And then what I what I will do as I perfect some of my um some of my concoctions for like the conducting gel through the sea moss and other things, I will take a look at what I can do to help people who own their spas already um, mm -hmm. be able to monetize more, provide more upsells, and just be able to serve their clientele. Mm -hmm. Because I see a lot of people spend a lot of time on getting new clients. But I'm really big on making sure my OGs, my people yeah. who are with me, are the ones that are taken care of. So it's like refer a friend, get a free session. Oh, they love that. 
you really know that because you have a lot of businesses that will go out and advertise even on like Groupon. They'll have their regular mm -hmm. customers. And it's nothing wrong with this because I understand you want to bring in new business, but mm -hmm. you have your regular customers paying 200 oh. for something. But then you go and yeah. put out a Groupon where people can come right. in for $40 and y'all roll out the red carpet for them right. because they're new. But the people that's been coming to you for a year, they're paying the regular price. And because you have a rapport with them, you're not really working hard to really give good quality customer service. So yeah. that is really hear that because that means you respect your brand and you respect the people that's been riding for, for you from the beginning. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, the, the, the people who start with you and the people who ride throughout with you, they're with you for real. You know what I'm saying? As new client, they could come in one day and be like, ah, you know, I don't really like her personality or I think, you know, she's from the East coast. Cause you know, I'm in Houston, right? Let's just keep it real. <laughs> Let's just keep it real. We talk fast and I hold on to all my yous and do's. You know, that could get irritating to some people. But you know what I mean? So everybody's not going to be your cup of tea. But the people who with you, they typically with you. They got your back and they'll be the first person who's going to tell somebody like, hey, you got to check out my girl. And that way you have some sort of, you know, continuity about yourself. But no. It's birthdays, birthdays, you name it. I'm always throwing in free services for my people because it's like, I really appreciate you. I'm here for you. And that's really what it is. I'm not here for myself. If they didn't come, I wouldn't make money. So exactly. I'm appreciative. <clears throat> so not only are you an entrepreneur, how the fuck? <laughs> uh, not only... um. Oh. Not only are you an entrepreneur and I'm, are you an entrepreneur um, podcasting the live 365 okay and the first time I saw your show was um you had uh, nails on and um nails had shared it and mm -hmm. um it, it was right up my alley I'm I'm always down for it and it's I hate calling it a battle but I'm always down for the dialogue between men and women I think that was about <laughs> dialogue between men and women hey. sometimes i like to you know be an e on the wall just to hear women you know talk and like cause I, i'm kind of curious it's like okay let me i just want to hear and understand um y'all mm -hmm. don't want to hear us in the room because it's not what you think it's never what you think when all guys in the room talking it's no it, yeah it's not what women think it's different um but um dina who reached out to you for the show i didn't know you also did a dating show so is the dating Apart from the Live 365? So, okay. So here it is. The, the way that I wanted to do it was because I have a lot of different interests, right? And you know how when you get, uh, if you have a lot of different interests, when you kind of like focus on one thing, you kind of get locked into it. And so Live 365 mm -hmm. is just like the overarching, like, this is K, this is what I do. This okay. is what I love. This is who I'm connected with. And having, you know, whether it's body sculpting or whether it's... um talking about whatever we be talking about, right? But the session that I'm currently running is called On the Market Live. So it is a part of dating. It, it was supposed to really be a show that was about bringing eligible men onto, you know, the site and having conversations with them. And like, look, are you on the market? But let me tell you something. Men are so fickle. You guys are so funny that it's just almost like, well, I, when I was putting all of this together, it was kind of... It, I was like, oh my God, like I wouldn't even date you. Like you can't even articulate. Some of the guys couldn't even articulate what they needed to say. Then some of them was like, you know, I, I just don't want to seem desperate. Like I can't get my own woman. You know, I don't want to. I'm like, God dang, this is killing me. I was like, you know what? I'm going to shift gears. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to mm -hmm. have candid conversations about with women and men and their singleness and about the journey to finding day. So whether it's tips, whether it's like, you know, talking to people who've been married for some time and what kind of helped them transition from single life over the married life. And then just some overall, like talking to guys like, Hey, what do you think about plastic surgery? You know, I've met some guys and it was like, you know, I actually don't mind a woman having plastic surgery, but I really don't care. Well, what do you think about lashes? What do you think about wigs? This one African guy, he was like, man, my mama wore wigs. So, you know, he was so used to it that it didn't make or break him. So my whole goal is to really just make sure that women understand that there is not one perfect model for what you need to be to be able to be with a man and be, you know, have this happy life. And the second is to know that, like, you can have it all. 
you know, sometimes we've been taught that we can choose this or we can have that. But no, we live in a world where we can have it all. You just have to choose. So start how you want to finish and then you'll be able to make some waves, you know. So mm -hmm. that's what On The Market Live is about. The last show I just did, I did 10 you know, the top 10 places to meet men. Cause I've been seeing people say it's hard to find men. I'm like, are you for real? <laughs> Everywhere I go, I see men, you know what I'm saying? But you're not going to find men at the brunch spot with your girlfriends and all seven of y'all are single. It just don't go like that, you know? So get them cigar lounges. I be telling, stop going out with your, co your female cousins and go out, find all your male cousins and go to all their events. Because God's been doing this for, to women for a long time. When a, when a female has a male cousin, all he want to know is who going to be at her party. Mm -hmm. All day. Mm -hmm. Which yep. one of your friends going to be at your party? We as women don't do that. We got to change the game here. Okay? So you need to tell your cousin who going to be at your party because I'm showing up. <laughs> Hang out with them. Women, the only way to act, have access to more men is be around more men. Sure. Because men be with men. Men don't be with women. You know, unless that's their woman or their mama or their sister. No, <laughs> their mama. Or their child. Be around more men. So that's what it's all about. That's what On the Market Live is all about. So when does it come on? So it comes on Thursdays at 8.30 p.m. It, uh, I stream on YouTube and I stream on my Facebook page, uh, Live 365 with Cat. So this 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 uh, Thursday, it is loving him without losing you. Mm -hmm. I love that. Oh my god! I think you hit a nerve in here. In the room. <laughs> Man. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because you don't have to lose yourself. Like, oftentimes we get so excited about finding someone to spend our life with and spend time. We have all these ideas and fantasies mm -hmm. of what our life is going to be like with this person. And slowly but surely, we start giving up pieces of ourselves. We stop going to the gym. We stop hanging out with our girlfriends. We stop, you know, we stop making time for ourselves. It's just like, oh, I just want to be with him. You know, I just want to be with him. What do you want to do? Whatever you want to do. <laughs> you know, like all of those, all of those things happen. And then what happens is later on in your life, later on in the relationship, well, first off, if the relationship don't work out, you're mad. Right, because you be like, I did all this for you, I gave up everything for you, and he looking like I didn't actually do that. Exactly. You, know <laughs> you you gave it up for yourself, and now you gotta go back and call your girlfriend that you did right. talk to for about two, three years because you kind of <laughs> dogged her out <laughs> while you went in love. Ain't nobody got time for that, or mm -hmm. the relationship just ends, or you stay in a relationship. But you get older and you be like, the kids are grown mm -hmm. and you don't even know where you at. You gone. You've been gone 20 years you ago. Lost, you yeah. lost yourself 20 years ago <laughs> and you're trying to figure out who the heck you are today because your kids are gone. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. So that's, you know, you lose yourself. You can lose yourself. But I'm trying, I want everybody to know it doesn't happen right away. You start giving pieces of yourself away because women, particularly black women, are really kind of taught or guilted and shamed to mm -hmm. feel like if you're not self-sacrificing and self-martyring, then you're not a good person. Right. That right. you have self-care and self-love means that you're mm. a bougie bee mm. or you're selfish <laughs> or you got to be a Leo. You know what I'm saying? Like all these things come with that. And it's like, so let me make sure I understand this. In order to love you, I have to not love me. Mm. Because in my mind, I love you, but I love me too. So if I love me too, and you feel like I need to be what you want me to be because I love you, then you telling me that I shouldn't love me? Like, who won't win at the love me part? Like, who are you supposed to love more? Yourself? Or the other person. And if anybody puts you at a crossroad where you have to choose between mm -hmm. you loving them and you loving yourself, they you are headed for destruction because you don't matter in the equation. It's all about mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Wait, it's my fair hands from a girl. Post. I have to. <laughs> 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 
I needed my amen. <laughs> okay, well, we got another question for you. So MP Rich wants to know, do you talk about the balance of compromise on your podcast? Um, we do come up with that. Like I say, you you have to you have to create your relationship. Yeah. Nobody else can. Right. What looks good for me and my relationship might not necessarily look good for you mm -hmm. in your relationship. Wow. You got to find that person that is going to be able to be your co-pilot. Mm -hmm. And I say co-pilot because it's always a team. It's not a, a head and a tail and a side and behind. We're a team. We in this together. I got your back. You got mine. So once you figure out who your co-pilot is, you guys decide. And then once you decide, you got to be able to stand tall and be you and that person against the world because the world is going to tell you what you should look like, how you should dress, how you should take care of your kids, when you should go on vacation, what you shouldn't do. And they'll even come to you and say, oh, your wife don't cook every day? Oh, no, man, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and someone else, the, the um, a woman will tell me, what you mean? You, you know, your, your husband don't take you on vacations every every month or every birthday? Girl, please, my man do this. And guess what? It gets up in that person's psyche and they start comparing their man to that other person's man, whatever period of time that is. And now we got this board. So you mm -hmm. got it. That's the reason why when you get married, they tell you, like, you don't nothing come in between us. You can't nothing penetrate what you have in your household. What so, in the preaching is going on today? Are you a motivational speaker? Yes, yeah, should be. You should be. Lord. Yeah, I believe in the preservation of love. You know what I mean? And family. And, and we had some old traditions that was kind of messed up, but it was, I understand the sentiment. What goes on in my household ain't nobody's business. Come on. That was for the protection of what was happening between your mother and your father. Right? right. Because right. they know the that outside of people can destroy it. Can we get a clap for her, please? <laughs> <laughs> It, it was you know, you know, it was some crazy stuff that happened that might needed to be revealed, right? So that's what I'm saying. I understand the sentiment, but it did hide some other things that might needed to be revealed and touched on, right? But the sentiment is whatever goes on in my household is between me and him. And I believe if people maintain like, look, whatever goes on between me and my significant other is between us. We make the decision. If my man cheat on me and I decide to take him back, it ain't nobody's ain't business. Nobody business. You know what? No, I, I, I'm glad to hear you to, to hear you say that because I had, was talking to two girlfriends of mine like a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. And I don't mind people sharing information, but if you choose to share your information, I'm not sharing my information. I'm private. Exactly. I like to hold things that mm -hmm. are sacred to me, to me. It's right. like, mm -hmm. I don't post stuff on social media. Don't nobody know my relationship status. And my whole thing is, is because it's none of your damn business. Mm -hmm. If you really are close to me like that, those people know. And if I feel like you're going to run my information out to the streets, I might not tell you. But mm -hmm. it's not a personal thing. It's a protective thing. I'm exactly. protecting my relationship because I know how people are. I'm protect protecting my family because I know how people are. And the moment you open up your life, people feel like they can have an opinion. So mm. before you think you can have an opinion, my thing is I'm going to make sure that you know you don't have an opinion. That's why you don't know shit about my life. Amen. But I'm wrong. With that. I get crucified for that. But I'm no, so it's what I hold. I value my relationship. So I don't want if I'm not going to deal with anybody. I want it to be because of me, not because I allowed other people to impact that relationship or tarnish that relationship by giving them exposure to my relationship. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I think you make a you know you make an awesome point, right? Because in life, a lot of times you're not supposed to let the left hand know what the right hand's on, right? So exactly. sometimes you, you have to protect your own space. And, you know, a lot of times when people want to know what's going on with you, they really looking for the dirt. You <laughs> understand? Because in the world, like you're out here, you're looking like you got it going on. Everything is good. They just uh -huh. need something to be able to say, mm -mm, not that far. I bet you don't know about this. Her man doing X, Y, Z and the other. And it'd be like, oh, man. I thought she was on top of the world. She was doing her thing, right? And that's how that's how that goes. So a lot of times people want to insert themselves, you know, that way. But it's like, why you would want to hear the bad about what's going on in my life? 
But mm-hmm. if I tell you about it, right? Because misery, misery, misery loves company, and it's like misery you said, and they'll All sit the around, people. they'll they'll blindly sing you praises. That's why I tell yeah. a lot of people: be careful. There's people that wish you well, and there's people that wish you hell. And just because they're yeah. around you consistently does not mean that they wish you well. Sometimes they're mm-hmm. waiting for that demise. They're waiting for that exposure, Ooh. that opportunity to knock you down and steal your crown. Exactly. So it's your responsibility to identify the people that you do have in your space and know, hey, are they adding value? Are they taking from me? What, are, what is their benefit? So exactly. I'm just happy to hear somebody else saying the same stuff I was saying two days ago. Yeah, because if you, if you, if you open, if I tell you something... Mm-hmm. I open the door for you to give me a response, period. Right. Right. And it's going to be what I think, you know, and right. you might not like what I think. So you right. got to be careful. Like, don't share something if you really don't want to know what people want to think anyway. And then right. second, it's like, just don't share it if you're just not open. And that's 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 key. But I'm going to say even further on that part, May, like, it's not just beyond you got people good that's for you and people against you. Most people don't want to see you doing better than them, period. Mm-hmm. I don't care who they are. You understand? Mm-hmm. Unless they are competitive and going to drive themselves. If if we got the same temperature and we had 78 and you go to 79, I might not notice it. You go to 80, I might not notice it. Right. But you start shooting up to 85 and 90, I'm going to look at it because I'm going to have to feel some way about myself because mm-hmm. I got to say why am I still at seven? Why am I not there? Mm-hmm. Right. But I'm not going to look at me because I got a well, four. Who looks at themselves a lot of times when it comes to what you're doing and how you're moving in the world? It's easier for me to knock the next person down so I can feel better about myself. Yeah. But I feel like a lot of times people just at the end of the day don't want you to do better than them. You can do the same, but I don't want you to do yeah, better. Better. Yeah. Right. better. Yeah. Well, I'm going to talk about you. <laughs> But also, every time, I, every time I see somebody on social media doing better than me, I report their page. Oh. <laughs> I'm, a different, I'm a different type of petty and hate. I feel already. like I believe you, though. That's a funny <laughs> thing. You should. I feel like I believe you. And you should. She only gave her two seconds, but she already got figured out. So I think they're selling drugs, <laughs> sir. <laughs> but I was just going to say on a spiritual level, because because I also have a podcast that's like on my spiritual journey. What I have found is secrecy, what people call secret, I'm like May, May Barry and yourself, I believe it's in private. being completely private. So mm-hmm. I was secret squirrel with my son. They didn't know I had a son. No one knew I had my son until he was three months. And they saw his picture that November of 2014. Mm. So the way I look at it is spiritually, like you both said, when people see that you're doing good, they they put out energy. And and you'd be wondering why your relationships and stuff start taking bumps and stuff. Because people are so petty and so mm-hmm. jealous that they let their egos run the show. Mm-hmm. To the it's point. funny you say that because, yes. um, you know, I tell people energy, you know, we all know energy is transferred, never destroyed. And people are like, what do you mean? What do you mean? I said, listen, if one of y'all yawn right now, I'm going to yawn. I, mm-hmm. Somebody around is going to yawn. That just demonstrates how energy is transferred. But I'm gonna mm-hmm. give you just like this quick short story. I was I was telling my girlfriend and I was talking about you know energy and be careful what you share with people because you never know. Yes. So she was actually praying for her and her you know kids' father whatever to work it out. And it had been years. They had been working at this thing for some time. She had been praying for him, them two to kind of work it out, but they just couldn't get it together for whatever reason. They just couldn't get it together. And so she told another good girlfriend of hers, like, you know what? I'm finally done. This is over. I'm I'm, try- I'm tired of trying to make this work. We can't get on the same page. And the girl told her, she said, man, I'm happy this finally done because I've been praying every day. Wow. <laughs> Why pray every day that you will finally get this dude out of your life, right? Wow. And she said at that moment, she really, really realized the power of prayer and mm-hmm. how no matter what she was doing, it just seemed like it was fighting against it. But mm-hmm. other times they have been able to, you know, work it out. Not saying that things was completely perfect, but right. they were able to get over certain hurdles. But this one particular hurdle, they could not get through. And she was praying, praying, praying. And her friend told her, she was like, I've been praying every day that she will finally leave this dude. And wow. I was like, baby, that is something powerful. 
to yeah. hear it. You know what I mean? Yes. That's terrible. Like, I don't I mean, know. I'm, I'm, a different, I'm a different type of petty, but I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Different ways because oh, I like, thought you were about to say no, something about me. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> prayer is powerful, but doesn't mean it was necessarily malice. If you see something, right. you see. but but what what my if it was good to me, who gives a fuck? That's why I, that's it, why right? I didn't say it, it to you. you. you she was in the background doing your juju friend, and dan- doing the dance friend, in the mirror and got the yeah, little doll. Shut up. Made up. Oh, it's it's always one extreme to the next. Pull out a doll with pants. Pray to God that you wake up and see the things that's hurting you is not right. what's best for you. How do you exactly. know what's hurting you? Though? How because about you? How about you ask me, me first? Like, like, how, about, me, how about do you want me to pray for you? If they're good girlfriends, she's spilling and telling well, her she good girlfriend what she's going through. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. I know and I've seen them go through some shit. But And they won't leave me. Instead and of me being scared down about what I think they should do, I'm praying that they see clarity. I'm praying yeah. that oh, you want it down. Boy, bye. Boy, bye. <laughs> you know what? I get your point. I get what I'm gonna say this. I get what Shannon is saying. I'm not a but as a friend who I see my friend is going through some right, stuff right. that I'm hurting for her for, yes, right. I'm going to pray for better for her, yes. but I'm not going to intercede in her right. space. Like, you need to leave that nigga. That nigga ain't, because that's not my, uh, listen, no. You, no matter what I say, you going to do. And I feel like at the end of the day, God has the last call and the last say. So no matter what I pray for, if God felt like that wasn't a place for you to be, guess what God going to do? He going to fix that situation on his own. Exactly. I'm gonna just give you. I'm gonna just give you a scenario. And Mike, I understand where you're coming from. I understand both sides. You can have a girlfriend who is a hater that might even be plotting on your dude. Yes. That might slip in here and be, you know, have ill intent. But I have been in situations. Y'all know that I have told y'all I came out and said something before. I had a girlfriend that I was helping in a domestic violence situation, and you cannot tell somebody in their relationship. How just like we just just Kate just said it. Everybody's relationship is different. However, you get to your end game and your goal is completely up to you and your relationship and your commitment to your significant other. However, mm-hmm. you see people in unhealthy relationships every day. If you really love the person that you're with, or friendship or whatever, you this is someone you love, you care about, you don't want to see them in pain. It's right. not that you want to see the demise of somebody's family, but if the issues is greater than or bigger than the relationship and the marriage. If there's more negative than positive, if there's more hurt and pain, why wouldn't you want your friends to do better? Why would you not want them to see what you're seeing? And there's a lot of women that are in relationships right now that are unhealthy, that they're, that are physically being abused and they stay and you cannot convince them to leave. Right. They feel like or are brainwashed in a certain capacity to believe this is a healthy relationship. This defines love. So as a friend, yeah, I sat in the background and I said, you know what? I'm going to be there. But every single time she went through something, yes, I was there. But in the background, was I hoping that hoping and praying that mm-hmm. she would do better, that she could come out of it, that God would help her find a way for her and her kids because she was dependent on this man because she was a stay at home mom. That God could give her, her, help, allow her to see her own business and what she can do for a brand to come up from under his wing. You damn right I'm going to advocate for my sister in that capacity. And I will never feel bad for that. Now, if I'm being a hater, then that's something totally different. But if you got a homeboy that's in a relationship and he, he keeps getting cheated on, but he yes. loves his girl, you're going to sit there and be like, yo, you, 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 you're not going to say nothing. You. I'm trying to tell you, you're going to sit in the background and be like, yo, you might make a little comment. Like, I don't know why he's still with that B. I don't know why. <laughs> you're going to make a comment. It's natural because now, why? Because you've been exposed to that relationship in a capacity to formulate an opinion. Exactly. So if you don't want anybody to have an opinion about mm-hmm. what you do or don't do in your relationship, you keep it private. But once it's out and open, people, it's fair game. Like exactly. everybody say whatever they want to say about it. So, you know, one of, the, one of the prayers I have from my friends, just to, you know, because you, you, you're very right, May, and going like, you guys are so right. And, and this person wasn't really hating on this person. This person had this person's best interest at heart. I hope my prayer for all my friends is let your will be done. And, and I'm going to tell you, because I've learned that I can't side on a particular side, because 
sometimes what happens is you end up being in, you know, conflict with your friend because when a person is not ready, when a person is not willing, anything you say to them is yeah. going to be to the negative. And so mm -hmm. to, to just make sure I'm not like stepping on nobody's, you know, toes or anything like that. Listen, when you're ready to do whatever you're ready to do, I'm here for you. And God, exactly. let her will be done. That's it. That's the only control I have. But you can't call me for everything either. I'm just going to be honest oh, with you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can't because I've, I've actually had a friend whose daughter was, you know, killed in the midst of trying to come to someone's um, defense in a domestic violence situation. Young girl, 21 years old. Rest in peace to her, you know. So I always tell people, like, you got to be very, very careful on how, do you, how you interject into people's domestic situation mm -hmm. because... Yeah. You you just you you know it's real crazy out here and it's it's That's so okay. touchy. And what you mean well, sometimes it's not received well. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I might have to take that. You are tuned into the Cooling the Gang Show live every yes. Tuesday night, six p.m. to eight p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have uh, Big G is in the building. He's been quiet. He's taking notes. Um, <laughs> he's, um he's on his holy spiritual journey. Uh, <laughs> Mac is in the building. Mayberry's here. Linnea's here. Glammy Shandy is here. Uh, and the professor, he, this is what he did, y'all. Instead not of him that. leaving, we he's, here. Is. I'm done. he's here. He's here, but he turned his camera off and he's just been listening. Um, yeah. and, uh, I'm watching to see him leave. Um, and we are joined by our special guest, Kenya K. Crawford, owner of Body, Body, Body Sculpting. Mia Bella body sculpting, and she's a podcast host, not just one podcast. I have an I get a headache just doing this one show. She does two shows, and, and <laughs> all blessings to you for that. Because if you know putting together and doing all that stuff with a podcast, it's it's time consuming, and then you have your own business and all that. So I think we need don't don't grab that clapper. I got my. <laughs> Thank you. You know, you can't do it without automation. Do you have to leave, Kay, or can you stay till 8 o'clock? No, do? let's go. I'll sit on the background and hang out with you guys. It's so up to you guys. It's I got still you. early over here. The I, sun went down, let's though. Let's go. She did it again. Believe it or not. The sun's down now. The sun's down now. She lost one of them. She can't throw that one at us. All right, so I got um I don't know what's happening. Like y'all saw I tried to do the screen share, right? Right. When it was uh was it it was green for y'all, right? Did it turn? No. I'm gonna see if, I'm gonna uh, see what it looks like for y'all. I just want to see oh uh, we was able to see it. Yeah. So this screen right here is not green or red. No, no. If y'all can see what I can see right now. Yeah. I can see Steve Harvey's bottom lip. Oh, okay. Okay, on our on our side. <laughs> <laughs> bottom lip. I can see Steve Harvey's bottom lip. Bottom lip. Yeah. On our side, I looks see, like I see a person's name up there that I don't like. Mike's homeboy. The oh, Kevin no. Samuel. Yeah. Yeah. Like you know, okay, like all right. Yo. So now that I know that y'all can see, that, I I can kind of do some stuff there. But um, I had went and already downloaded some um videos just to be on the safe side. I didn't want to be embarrassed in front of our guests because y'all get to talk about me. I don't like that. That's all. So, um, this is something you all may be able to update me on because I'm not really familiar with this situation. My mom tells with um, Kiara Shear shares a message about boundaries following comments she made about friends staying at her home. Huh? Ain't nobody staying in my house. <laughs> Damn, hey, Barry, let me uh. <laughs> <laughs> I felt that. I felt that. Nobody up, get my damn notes. Notes. <laughs> you don't stay in my house. Let me get my notes. What? Okay. <laughs> so it says, um, nowadays healthy boundaries seem like insecurity. Why is it still playing? Oh no, it's not. I'm like them. Nowadays healthy boundaries seem like insecurity and distrust to some. However, for those who like. Uh, the truth here is the full video for so many who are reaching and making juicy headlines for clout. That was what she said. So I guess she's going to explain uh, whatever it was. Did you see it, Kay? Did you see the original post that she had about that? No, I didn't. She has a message. Them whores got to get a hold of that one. Uh, did she call them whores? 
Look, I saw it and I get it. But once you're married, do not let another woman into your household. And I know you have close friends, and you know, we've seen it on TV, reality shows, we've seen it in real life, seen it on court shows, talk shows. You let a family member, a close friend, stay at your house for a while. Maybe they need, you know, need a place to stay, and something happens with the husband. Hotel. Are you mindful of that? Does your mother warn you of that? Like, Kiara, I know you have a good heart, sweetie. On go okay, so that was that was one part of the video. And um, I got it, I got one more. I'm going to give to y'all, and then um, we already got some comments. Has already, look, don't have, any, don't have too many people around y'all. Don't get comfortable. I don't care how, you know, good you trust or whatever it is. I'm very mindful um, and very careful. I will buy a friend a hotel room before I let them stay at my house. However, I am a oh. prayerful woman to discern the space that I am in. Um, I'm also very cautious of, you know, what what purpose am I supposed to serve in this person's, this person's life? And so while I, my mom. So, we already got comments in the room, but I will let you all, um, we have a guest, so Kay, we'll let you go first. What are your thoughts on, uh, take, take the whole thing off? Yeah, we, we heard what she said, we don't need to keep it. Down. I just thought somebody might have wanted to come in and wonder what the hell we're talking about. I'll, I'll write it. Go ahead, Kay. So, I mean, I wouldn't do it. Like, I wouldn't do it. Like, my girl, like, I'm single, so I know how to worry about that. My girlfriend's they know they have the luxury of coming down to Houston every time they feel like it. But when I was married, mm -mm, no, I, I didn't do all that. Like, you not, that's not what we do. It's just, it's just not what we do. If it's like my grandmother, that's different. Even though I don't know, grandma, I might have to check. I was about to say, no. Grandma, let me go out and get the work. No, we want to stay home too. Yeah, you know, the only problem that you had with them grandmothers is that they cook more than you because they start baking and doing all that other stuff. And by the time you get home, it'd be like, oh, this was your, you know, no, I'm not doing comparisons. But no, I would never do that. Mm mm. It's not happening. And it's not that I don't trust my girlfriend or cousin, whoever. It's or my man. It's just that I don't feel a need to. Like, why are we doing that? We not why are we but doing see that? as a man, it comes off as what you don't no, trust me around your girl. Like, you no, don't but trust me around your girl. Paint a woman to be insecure because she makes an executive. No, I, I don't think, I'm not trying to make you feel insecure, but I but I, 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 would, I would I would first I, would, I know, but but if I would just my first thought would be like I wouldn't think that automatically you would be thinking of something about your friend that you've known for a while, I would automatically think, the fuck you think I'm going to do? <laughs> like, I mean, I think it's just natural for you to kind of put it on yourself. Like, even, I think even if you told your girlfriend, girl, you can't stay here, I think she might think, oh, yeah, that nigga must be a My dog. My bitch is no better than to even ask me that. That's the <laughs> difference. My bitch is no better. You not staying in here. I will put you in a hotel, but you won't stay in the house with me and my man. Mm -hmm. No, what in the threesome do you think this is? No. What in the threesome? I, oh, God. Yeah, you, know, you, have to, you have to alter. You have to do a lot of altering. Like, I went to go visit my girlfriend in South Carolina, but her husband, you know, he works out of town a lot. I went to visit while he was out of town. I wouldn't, I don't go to visit her when he's in town. Like, I don't think that that would be appropriate. I was saying as, as a woman, I'm not even. A, I don't even feel comfortable. I wouldn't even feel comfortable as a woman going to another friend's house and staying in the house with her with her husband. I don't feel comfortable with that. So let me ask: Are you so saying I wouldn't, I wouldn't want it, another woman doing that in my home? Right. So okay, let me let me understand the circumstances of, of around. So are we talking about so, your girl? They moving in, or I'm coming to visit and you going for the day, and your girls at the house? Like I'm trying to because I'm like, I went to my best friend's house many times when she was married, and like, like none of that shit ever crossed into one of our minds. Like, I ain't even think about it. Door is open. Come on. But I feel like that's on a personal preference. I'm not I'm not shaming anybody else for their decisions. For my home, 
it don't work for my home. I'm never going to tell anybody else how to conduct their home, but I'll be damned if somebody going to tell me how to conduct mine. Ain't nobody going to tell me how to parent, and ain't nobody going to tell me how to manage so my marriage. Because, because is it because of the, is it because of the man or the woman? So is it, is it, is it, is it to worry about the man or the woman? I'm trying to get an understanding. It's a, pro- it's a well, one thing. One thing you got to realize, though, if he is that type of dude, it don't matter if she stay at the house or not. He know how to get okay. to the hotel. Right. But, it's not a heck, but I think that we're making it more so we're focusing on the fact of it's a cheating thing. Or like what I'm saying. Like, that's a, yeah, that's, that's all that come off. That's all that come off. Outside of what else would it be outside of that? Because if, if it's your home, girl, if it's, home. if it's your home, girl, and y'all been tight. And y'all been tight for years, and you got a husband or a man. He didn't already been around, and he didn't already got in his mind how he feel about the situation. If he a real dude, he's not even that, knowing that's your girl. He ain't no thoughts gonna come in his mind. So what so, about you? So, yeah. So what about us? It doesn't sister, have to be an cousin? extra around it. It's, it's just a preference. Like me, I wouldn't stay at somebody's house. I wouldn't. I would get me a hotel room because I want the freedom. What, 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 the, fact, the thing is, is I want the freedom to be able to walk around a home the way that I want to or be in my space. I can't do that comfortably at a girlfriend's home with her husband and, and still feel like I'm being respectful. I don't go on vacations to be uncomfortable. And I'm damn sure not going to be uncomfortable in my home because I have to give people rules and regulations on how they may or may not need to conduct themselves in my home. So to me, to eliminate that, mm-hmm. I make an executive decision to create boundaries. Why does boundaries have to equate cheating? Why does boundaries have to equate insecurities? That's not what it is. I think we talk, we're we too busy trying to read into it when it's a preference. If it works for other people, then it works for them. My preference is I'm just saying no, but I know other people who have done it. I've had a girlfriend who said, hey, no, you can stay here. No, boo, I don't want to stay in your home. I'm going to go ahead and stay in my little hotel. I'm fine with that. It's just okay. preference. Hold on, so, let me get Linnea. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, think about this Kiki Sheard. She's a she's a descendant of the Clark. Yes, so at the Clark. So she, so she got a image to uphold. They are like they are just, you know, gospel celebrities. So she's just she's doing a, a she's a this. Right. So she got a plus she got to think about her grandmother. Her grandmother didn't play with her mother and aunts. So she's just keeping that going. So it's just it's just a courtesy thing. I, I feel. You know what's crazy? My sisters, when I was married, my sisters came down here from uh, Baltimore and um they came to Houston for the weekend and they um, ended up going into a hotel room right near where I live when I was married. And um, and when we talked about that, we had a conversation about that. They was like, we ain't, we ain't putting no clothes on. They're like, you think we <laughs> you think we're gonna be worried about we're gonna get up, we're gonna have our little booty shorts on, our little shirts or whatever. We just trying to be free, do what we want, come and go as we want. Don't have to worry about if I come in at two, three, four, five o'clock in the morning, it doesn't even matter. So I feel like even with my sisters, like we we're like 17 years difference in age, but they were just like, I'm not, you're married. I'm not going to even interrupt that energy in you guys' household. And my daughter went and go and stay with them in the hotel. But yeah, it was just like, nah, I'm not going, I'm not going to be tiptoeing around your house. Trying to make sure I got my robe on before I move from other Scott to different. Like it just was like they not gonna do, they just wanna go to the fridge and open it up and just be like, whatever. And he see whatever he see. And these girls, they, you know, body sculpting or not, my family is corn fed. Okay. <laughs> they only make it to the to the shortest one, to the biggest one. They've been like, that's just how it's built. So they like, mm. Oh. I had to put one of those, what is it, the casting on them, you know what I'm saying? For them to, to walk They never got no clothes on, God, Jesus. See, I can see it from a point, that's, um, that standpoint right there. If you right. know that your girlfriend the type that all she wears is short and skimpy shit, right. and she's going to get up in the morning, run to the bathroom, or run to the kitchen, and she ain't going to have nothing on but the little booty shorts. Right. You have to understand that, you know what I mean? Know. But so, Mac, would, wouldn't it be, if you make a decision to just not completely and you don't have to make anybody feel bad Mm -hmm. on a decision that you're making that's why i said it's my preference i don't want if i do know i got a hot ass girlfriend versus Mm. i know i got a girlfriend that's not it's better for me to make an executive decision how to run my home 
versus right. me sitting back and saying, you can come and stay, but you but can't. You can. yeah. Yeah. I'm not that would be crazy. All right, let me get you. That's, that's what G. I'm saying. I'm not going to do think, that. G? Good point. I don't know. What? I don't know. I'm on the fence. Now you think about it, Professor, because he 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 turned his camera on for a reason. Definitely <laughs> did. Absolutely <laughs> did. Um, I I think it's a terrible idea if you're married or in a relationship to have the opposite sex in your house. I do personally. I wouldn't let none of none of you niggas stay at my house if I was if I was married or had a girl. Just just for the bracket. And <laughs> and I told. I told my my ex when we were together, I told her that if your sister comes around, I don't want to be here. She said she she didn't understand why. I said, because I don't want no conversation about something that did or didn't happen when when whenever you know there's a disagreement or not a disagreement or somebody mm -hmm. wants to act like something happened or whatever. Just to keep down the bullshit, listen, just don't have her around. If she if she come around, that's cool. Y'all do whatever y'all doing, I'll leave. Well, I'll be in another another room or doing something different. I don't even want to come to, come in the same area as that because I don't want nobody to say I stared at him or <laughs> brushed up or touched something. Nope. I don't was have nothing bad, to do though? with it. Was she bad, oh, though? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you already knew. You already knew. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, def she's definitely, she's definitely attractive, and wow. well, I'm gonna just say that she, she, she definitely. <laughs> she ain't, she ain't watching, but she definitely, she definitely, she definitely attractive. But Maybe I just didn't uh, send it for me, please. <laughs> chop that clip right there so I can send it. I need to email that part of the show to uh, sure, no somebody. problem, boss. I got that right for you. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what? That's it was really funny. Like um, my grandmother is eighty eight, right? And um, she used to, she made this comment a long time ago. She said it's never supposed to be um, two queens in a house. Yeah, it's never supposed to be two queens in a house. But you ain't a queen till you got a king. Well, yeah, you still can be a queen. Actually. You can be born into queenhood. You can you can be born into the queen technically, just like right, you know, that's the birthright, right. right? But um, you don't have more than um, one queen in the house. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is just that back in the day, she, she, when she used to tell us, she was like, when the women came around, the women would be in one room and the men would be in another room. Right. Like they didn't even do a lot of socializing amongst each other, so mm -hmm. it wasn't that fraternizing. Because a lot of times when a man come into um, into the room, he want to know what the women are saying. She said, even hmm. he want to know what the women are saying, even to know know um, what uh, what's happening because he knows it so he can report back, or he trying to find out which one is the weakest link so he can see who he can get up under. Like I'm going on old school, right? I I, I tell y'all the sentiment be real, okay? That's so a when men are around and they pay, men ain't paying women no attention. You know what I'm saying? Like, unless they paying them some attention. They already done registered day one. As soon as they saw she could get it or she can't. Boom. That's it. Day one. The moment he met her, shook her hand. She could either get it or she can't. Now, I must and be an asshole it. because I don't pay none. Of, I don't pay nobody no mind. When you come visit my house, if you even see me, you got lucky because... That's my point. I just don't be around. Like, I just... I be in my I be in my little area because I don't really like I I talk enough on this show. I don't really like talking to people when they come to my house. Like I ain't with the talking shit. But I think like I just don't I wouldn't take the option away. Like it don't matter to me. Like if you choose to stay somewhere because you like to walk around booty naked, that's fine. If you want to stay at our house, I don't give a shit. Like what would you agree, sir? Well Mike, 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 you gay though, so that's Jake. probably all I am. <laughs> and how does that make you feel, Mrs. Coombs? <laughs> <laughs> this show about to be canceled. Yeah, we done. Y'all just, done. just spent all that knowledge, and we about to be canceled off of Rudy's I little. Uh, we, got uh, we got some good information from Miss K, and this yeah. is going to get deleted just because. About to get deleted. Uh, Sure. Hold on, let me take this out. Okay, so I guess we got our final answers on that. Um, basically, um, the majority thought is 
You can come over for lunch, but you can't sleep here. Mm -mm. Oh, too much temptation. Hey yo, you know what? I want to I want to say something about something y'all talked about earlier too. Um, I sent you I sent you a post that this this girl put up, and I really like what she had to say. Sent it to um, me. Yeah, but you don't gotta put the post up. It was it was referencing um, a comment that that Kay had made about keeping your business in the house. That's that's mm -hmm. around what it's about. And what the post said in a nutshell was, everybody claims that they're solid, but solid means not trying to explain your point, even if you're right, mm -hmm. right? And <clears throat> when I when I hear people talk about keeping a business in the house, even yeah. if you know that your point of view can explain why things fell apart, aren't going right, aren't going to work out, whatever to your out to the people that's on the outside, whether it be outside family members, friends, or whatever. If you're saying that you love this person and you really so you really a solid person, then you keep that between y'all. If they decide to go out, then that speaks to their character. That don't have nothing to do with you. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to explain your point to anybody because the person in the household knew exactly what it was and knew exactly why things went the way that they went. And I, and I was just thinking about that when you were talking about um, the ways of old and see, and that's another thing. We fellow, we there are some traditions that need to be changed, but there are a lot of traditions that need to remain the same. Right. Um, the older generation had a lot of a lot of things um, down pat that kept their households in order, but we mm -hmm. have decided to use some different things because we thought that it made more sense to us. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. What's that old saying? Everything that's understood don't need to be explained. explained. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. That's like codes that you just live by. I, I just told a friend the other day, if you ever want something to stay a secret, don't tell nobody. Exactly. As soon as you say something, that shit ain't a secret no more. Um, The laws of attraction. Mm. Let's uh, see what this is about. And mind you, I haven't even listened to any of these because these were not my original um, preferences. Well, my office wants to go and come back to you. It's the law of attraction. I can't meet nobody because of COVID. You're not. All men are dogs. You finna meet all of them. I never get nobody. You're not. I can't lose this weight. You sure ain't. I'm going to get fit this year. Strong possibility. I'll never be rich. Sure, I'm going to be rich one day. Strong possibility. That's how it works, man. It's the law of attraction. It doesn't matter whether you believe in it or adhere to it. It is the law of attraction. It will never change. Everything I have is because I say. Everything you have is because you say. If you change what you say, you change the moment you say it, you begin to change. It's the process. If you think big, you'll be big. If you think small, you'll be small. And I've said it before on the show, Professor, I'm going to beat your ass. And I've been saying that shit for years. Like, real talk. I've been telling you that shit for Whoa. years. Who made you go back to that? This, bro. Thinking into you your ass. I'm going to whoop your ass. No one's trying to cuss it. I'm just telling you, I've been words, saying it for words years. Words are very strong. And that's yeah. what y'all said earlier. That's all, And that's what I was saying, like, with the prayer, like, like talk to me first before you get to praying, because you don't really know what I want. Like, let's have a conversation first, you and I'll tell know you. What you want. Well, you know, well, that's you between that's want. between me and my Jesus. You, well, you and your Jesus, y'all talk about whatever y'all want to talk about, but don't talk about me. Like, that's just let me be included in the conversation. I'm of what gonna you remember that the next about. time you ask for somebody to pray for your ass because. Yeah, but if I ask for it, I'm you don't know what I'm it. praying though. I'm gonna pray. See? And you don't know who they're praying to. That's right. And so, <clears> so um, <throat> there was there's you know that terminology um, uh, is, is like interchangeable. You hear it said different ways. Mm -hmm. So a few minutes ago, you were talking about vibrations and energy. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, the brother that was on here the other day, and and the reason why he said, remember when it, what was his name, Greg? When he said mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. he started off with his his name with I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember when he had the conversation about him? And yeah. you know that when I post, I post I am him. Like that's 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 all conviction. That's all about believing in in something um greater than yourself that's within you. People talk about the sub subconscious. This, 
Yeah. It's all the same conversation. And he's and he's 100 percent right. I got an uh, audio book. The guy said the man that says he can't and the man that says that he he can. Both they're right. both right. right. You know, it just depends on how you view things. Exactly. Yeah. Anybody else want to add? Well, sure. you are the key. You are the whole. You are the only key. Yeah, yeah, I agree with him. I'm a firm believer in that. Speaking into the universe, uh -huh. the universe is your genie; it shall provide. Yeah. Speak it into existence. Uh -huh. You know, everything that we have in life, where we are right now, is basically from a series of our decisions. Exactly. Everything. We manifested it. Even if somebody's in a relationship they wanted, they prayed for it to have it. Beginning. They just didn't want it after they got it. But that's not... <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Right. Like, we, we, we work so hard to get the thing, then we get the thing and realize the thing wasn't even... Up. That It could be some shoes. It could be a hamburger. It could be so many... It could be so many different things, but... At the end of the day, like you manifested everything in your life except being born. I tell people all the time, you only the only people you don't get a chance to pick in your life is your mother and your father. But you get to pick your friends. Oh. You can pick the people you surround yourself around, you know? So we 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 create these movies. Your life is a movie. And you can either be the star, you can be the supporting actress, you can be the extra. You could be the director, you could be producer. But it's all at the end of the day is your own movie. So you determine how you want to play this out. Yeah. That part. Dana said, be more intentional with your yeah. own reality. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think a lot of people when COVID hit and people had to sit sit their asses down and mm -hmm. be still, mm -hmm. they started realizing this a whole lot. You know, you started hearing more people talk about manifestation yeah. and speaking over this their lives and um, you know, just kind of getting more in sync with all of that. Um, and and honestly, I think it's it took for the world to make everybody be still slow down. and mm -hmm. slow down and to look. start realizing how important certain things were that we were not initially implementing exactly. in our daily lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, it's funny. I ask people, what do you want? You know how I many people can't answer that question? Just ask somebody, like, what do you want? I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't about to say that. <laughs> that, is a, that is a hard question to answer, though. When um, I mean, it depends on the, the aspect of the conversation. Right. Bro, it's like if you start and say, what do you want out of a relationship? But if you just ask somebody, what do you want in general? They're going to be like, shit, I want a million dollars. I want a big house. I, you know, all the materialistic shit will come out first. Right. But, you know, I mean, you're going to have to take time to look inside yourself to see what you really want or, I mean, even what you need. But, like, to answer that question just, like, in general, like, what do you want? That that, that can be a tricky and hard question to answer. I think most people would probably answer first with what they need. I don't think most – I think most people wouldn't even think about what they need. I think they would automatically go to just what, what they, they want. want. Like right. Right. I want to be rich. I want to answer. At the, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, your desire is what, what feeds everything that you do. Right. Your desire gives you the motivation to make those things happen. So it's not about what you need. It's about what you want because you really technically don't need nothing but to stay black and die. That's what you. Yeah. That's what's gonna happen. <laughs> everything else that you you, you want bread, you want milk, you want water. These things are your wants. Mm -hmm. So here's the funny part. If you don't know what you want, which is your overall big picture of how you rolling in life, how you connecting with people in life, if you don't have the big picture, right? How can you really, really work on the details if you don't even know what you're trying to build? It's like having a business and say, anybody come, anybody do whatever. I don't know what I'm building, but I'm sure. Mike, when you said, I'm going to put this podcast together, right. this is my framework, this is my vision, this is my mission. Now it's time for me to go back and align. It's time for me to get the right technology. It's time for me to bring the right people in. So if you don't start out knowing what you want in life from the get-go, mm -hmm. you're screwed because you're going to let anything come in and mess it up for you and you're going to be reacting and blaming the world but the moment you choose you don't want this person in your life, you can cut them off. 
but you didn't have a picture of what you really was trying to accomplish. So you just was like, you know, I'm open. You know what I'm saying? We'll see. This, this feel like you only get one. When you gone, that's it. I mean, if there's such thing as reincarnation, you ain't coming back as you. You come back as a cat. <laughs> you might be a rat on Baltimore Street. Like, I don't know what you going to end up being. That's not my choice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, I don't know how you coming back. You could be, you could be a rat over here on uh, Fremont Street. It don't make sense. Like, we don't know how you coming through in this, you know, in this world, but it's important for people. What do you want? The thing is, is a lot of people, like Mac was saying, and even you said, they don't know what they want. And, and even if you have nowhere to start, at least start to identify what you don't want. Because then right. maybe you can get to what you want in your life, what you want out of your relationship by saying, okay, that's also experience in life, not being scared to try something so you can learn, mm -hmm. oh, well, this really don't work for me. So yeah. that you can then build the mold that you want right. in your life, like how you want things to actually be and how you want it to look. Mm -hmm. But you know what, May? You know why people won't ask, won't answer the question? Because they too afraid that they not going to get it. We don't right. like to say right. what we really want because right. that makes us vulnerable because that means somebody else got to give it to us. So we hate to be vulnerable. Yeah. So we avoid saying what we really want because we too afraid that we might not get it. Or oh, we feel unworthy. Or oh, we feel unworthy. Or oh, we not deserving. So right. say what you want. Let the or, let the universe come to you how it's going to come to you. That's the law of attraction. Can I say what I want? Yeah, you can say what you want. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> say what you want, boy. I am hungry, though. Um, <laughs> so I'm speaking to existence. I know. Give oh, me <laughs> Uber Eats. <laughs> G, you hear this shit? Well, G was already around it all weekend. Oh, yeah. G, me, I, G is my best friend. G, you my best friend, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I got it. I got another post and I'll add it to the stream. So this one says, stop entertaining men who don't have strong, healthy men in their lives who they admire and get advice from. When you deal with lone wolves or rebels who aren't accountable to anyone, you risk being with a broken man who will break you too. Ooh. All right. Then the caption goes to say, broken men rarely have networks of accountability because working towards measurable healing isn't what they want. If you don't know how to build quality relationships with other men, what makes you think he can build a quality relationship with you? Mm. Yeah. Just that was wide open. That um, that that hit yeah. some. Oh, you said remove it, right? Y'all need to keep reading. I mean, it's annoying me because you know how. Oh, green and red. I wish y'all could see the way our screen look green and red right now. Um. So what do you? So what do you think? Is, is this a fair statement, G? You got anything for this one? Uh, no. G, did you just show up so you wouldn't get fined? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, just nah. I, I don't. I don't know. It's the same, G. I ain't hear not one fuck you, Mike, or yeah. nothing. Like, what is going on Are here? You sick? I, no, no, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm fine. I don't. I just. I don't know. I don't have strong friend, Joe. You're right. Checking on my strong friend, yo. I, I don't have. I don't know. I don't have an opinion. What? Who don't have strong, healthy? I, I I do think just like women, men need to have strong, healthy men in their lives. Right. Um, I I think that's very necessary, very very necessary because just like when y'all look at little little boys and y'all you know you're like you know you can't learn from a woman. He needs he needs a man in his life. You know, hopefully a strong man, a responsible man, but. I think it's it's, it's the over. same concept because you know when you have healthy, strong men that you can build relationships that they they are pouring into you, they are helping to mold you and teach you and learn you all of the things that only I think another strong man could teach you. So now, what about the strong women that's raising kings by themselves? 
but I still think that there's some entity of those young kings mm -hmm. that need a strong man, right. man, because there's things that no matter how strong I am as a woman, and no matter what I go through and what I, I handle, I'm still not a man. I, I don't go through the struggles that a man goes through. But so I, I, I don't think dig it. I don't but I, but what what you saying, G? It doesn't take. I think this is more for this. So the, at, the second part is when it says when you deal with lone wolves. So I think this is more so focusing on if you have a man somebody, that don't have no friends. Yeah, it's somebody. I guess if you just a loner, like. I think it's more so focusing on that dude that's a loner. Like, not to say nobody's gonna pull his jacket and be like, "Yo, bruh." Yeah, he just he just a loner. You so know, we all a, a rebel. He anymore. just like he don't hang with anyone. And nobody can control a rebel. A rebel is going to be a rebel. I mean, right. some women like women like bad boys, right? Women mm -hmm. like rep like they Ooh, like that. Shit. Some that do like that. Some, I'm, some, mm -hmm. not generalizing well, everyone. So they got some hands around there, net. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. thank you. Yeah. God damn. Like saying mm -hmm. they're not being held accountable. There's nobody who is able who's pulling their jacket when they're doing wrong to be like, hey, bro, like, listen, right. let 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 let's wrap, yo. Like, what the you fuck is really going on? Like, or they may have that person, but every time that person pull them, it's like, man, fuck that. You know, I do right. me. Mm. You know, that's that's Mike. that's that's a brother favorite. That's a nigga favorite line, man. I do me. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's, it's a lot of, a lot of people. A lot of people won't. Um, Listen, like I got a couple homeboys that I talk to, and but they're gonna do what they want to do anyway. Like that's I start talking about that's Facebook, wolf. we'll be talking about something serious and getting deep, maybe a business or something like that, and then they'll change the subject. Like, man, fuck that, roll roll the weed up, or something. and right. I'm like, no, we in a different place, right? You know what I mean? We right. it's like people will avoid those type of conversations because I just believe they just don't have it in them to comprehend it, and and. Again, it's because they didn't have somebody strong around them growing up. Like they say, still sharp and still. So I, I agree with the statement. I, oh, I'm not sure as far as dealing with men because just because a man ain't had somebody in his life that, you know what I mean, like you said, pull his coat, that don't mean he's still not a good dude. That don't necessarily mean he is a rebel. Like some people just loners. You know, the only thing that pissed me off about this post was brown... Oh, browsing in peace says exactly. Don't trust a man who gets all his advice from podcasts. Same well, one. yeah, fuck you. Uh, <laughs> this is good advice. I'm gonna tell you right Dang. now. Kay got a good podcast to get advice from. So, what was she talking about? <laughs> we, we, uh, yeah, people are so crazy with that. People are so crazy that because I think at the end of the day, is whether or not you able to take information and make it work mm -hmm. for your life. Which right, because that's true education. Nothing else is education. That's just knowledge, right? The education is when you're able to take things from a multiple, you know, multiple places and bring it in. So we need we need guidance from the women. We need guidance from our young women. Our young young women literally can pour energy into an older woman any day, right? She gets her energy from a younger woman. Older women are able to pour wisdom into younger women. Like a man needs it from everybody. He even needs to be around kids. Men who do not be around little kids have a hard time having patience and some other things when they, you know, but when they got little brothers and, you know, they, they, they have this certain way about themselves that they, they love the kids, you know, they have that part. So I'm going to say, I think I know where the sentiment is, but the, the, the fact that you're trying to say that healthy men is. The, the core that is the that's the one thing that's going to determine whether a person be a loner or a rebel or not. Like, I don't know about that part, wow. but we can't glamorize savaging, right? That's a savage, period. People who are out here savaging have put it in their head, they don't care, and they're gonna pay whatever other people did to them in the past forward. Mm -hmm. But that mm -hmm. don't mean that was trauma from another woman, it could have been trauma from family, trauma from friends, trauma from. Whatever, but I don't think those two completely. I don't think the first paragraph or first sentence really kind of constitute that this is the second. I think the second could stand alone, probably on its own. So I don't know. There's, there's definitely is. men who have had. I'm, I'm pretty sure strong, healthy um, men in their lives and still turn out to be assholes. Mm -hmm. Preach. Mike got two. See. Oh, had assholes mm -hmm. and end up being good damn people. Right. Mm, I don't know about that, but 
There are some. Oh, there we go. There he is. So do y'all think that women men really ha- rarely have a network of accountability? That's the name. Because working towards measurable healing isn't what they want. Oh. Right. You just got some people that just like they operate better in chaos. Like they they need that type of drama to fuel them. So it's just it's it's just in some people, you know. I know a lot of people like if everything is going good, everybody key cans, they're gonna do something right, to piss somebody off just so it could be a back and forth. It's they like have <laughs> so I know. <laughs> people, people just some people just like that wow. negative energy. It gives them it gives them a chance to always have an opinion. Hmm. Or be the center of attention because once you become that negative Nancy in a room, everybody's like, "Yo, man, calm down." <laughs> There's people who like attention, whether it's negative or positive. They just drive off, you know, right. off you. Yeah. Right. They don't like peace, and that's a sign. If they don't like peace, give them the peace. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm disappearing like homeboy from them old old wheels. I'm disappearing. Well, it's coming up on the time. Um, it's Matt got a birthday coming up. Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, I wanted to touch on this before we left because um, we talked about it last week. Whoopi Goldberg's comments on The View and show enough as soon as the show ended, right, Whoopi got suspended. Yeah. Uh, Whoopi, it wasn't us. We was on your side. Uh, you know, definitely wasn't us. I didn't snitch this time, like, for real. Like, I didn't tell nobody. <laughs> I didn't. Okay, we didn't already lost one YouTube channel. I I don't mind losing another one. You know, you got enough Gmail accounts, you can create another YouTube. But yeah, the channel was it was good. We lost one channel, and um, it's and it's, it pisses me off every time I go to YouTube and I try to log in under that account. It's, it's, I can't even log in as a a human being. Like they like no fuck you and everything you stand for. But anyway, Whoopi got suspended. So what do you all? Was it a surprise? No. Saw it coming. We knew it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you knew it was coming. We knew that it was coming. Down down because of the powers that be that run shit. Hello. That's why she shouldn't apologize because she was gonna get suspended anyway. You gotta stand on your words. You gotta stand on your words because it, you did, you didn't open your mouth and say that if you didn't believe it. You know, so to go back on yourself and apologize. Come on now. Even no. in her apology, she didn't backpedal on what she okay. said. She, she per- said she, she, she said I should have included right this other part. She did not backpedal on what she but said. But that, that is a backpedal because she started off saying it wasn't about race. And then she said in her apology, I should have included race. Mm. So she kind of went off of what she was standing on. <laughs> just bow down kind of to it and be like, fuck it. Yeah, you're right. But at the end of the at the end right. of the day, like we all said, race was a part of it. May not have been what started it. Right. But I think the race was a part but of it because of believe. how they see, like we're like we said, we question is Jews is a little is it race <laughs> or is it a national, you know what I mean, or is it a um religion or, or religion, right? Mm-hmm. So for her at the moment, she may have been looking at it in her eyes as a religion and not necessarily a race. But then when they start school, you know, schooling them, like no, this is for them, it is a race. To them, then how can I negate that? When okay, okay, now I, I didn't know that, that y'all y'all like I thought it was, I personally thought it was religion, right? That okay. me. So I learned something new in our discussion that hey, it it is considered a, a race, right? In terms of you know what was happening during that week. So I don't think she backpedaled on what she said because at the end of the day, she still said no. It it was more the human. You know, people treating people, but now that I know that they felt like this race was a lower race than that race, it was a part of it in a sense. So, so I can, like like what NJ Rich just said. Whoopi was looking at the human race versus the race of people. Right there, you go. Mm-hmm. But on the um on the census bureau, on the census bureau, what they say? What, what they say? What race and ethnicity are you? Is, is Jewish there? Yeah, yeah, this is it. Is no, I don't think so. Like, oh, I'm like pulling it up, somebody pulling it up. Google it. I could have sworn I saw Jews. 
When yeah, you Ruby should have just said, I said what I said. That's she, that's all right, pretty said. much. I said she what I said. Right. Right. They would, then they would probably yeah, check it's, other. It's white, black, or African American, American Indian, or Alaska Native, Asian, Native Hawaiian, or other Pacific Islander, which they fall that's under. The that's the only races that we have in the U.S. Last time I checked when we was doing the census and the COVID testing and all the other stuff. Yeah, because nowadays, I'm just saying, I ain't got nothing to say. I'm just saying that I remember when someone would say, um, I'm black, and be like, oh, so you mean African American? It's Indian, they were Asian, period. Like, didn't matter how it went. They had to fall under one of those five characters. So the, the Jewish and poor Christ, they what they checking white? They would check white. <laughs> yeah, they would check white. So Hispanics, a lot of they, you know, they but that's why we got right? non-Hispanic versus right. Because you can be black and be Hispanic and Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm not. I'm just saying it makes yeah. sense why if you go off of yeah. the five races you in the United not, States of America, where Whoopi was going with that, it right. wasn't about the race itself. It was about this particular religion. So Judaism is the religion based right. on all yeah. the religions. So. Mm -hmm. Because right. you could be a black shoe, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, they do have them. Well, um, and the NFL now only has one black football coach left. Say what? Y'all about to be I don't know why everybody's about to be surprised. Extinct. Like, I don't even know why everybody's <laughs> surprised about that. Like, like the NFL has, is still an old boys club, and cool. it's always been. And people still seem to be shocked when shit happens. Like, the, the shock factor from people is still what amazes me today. Like, they be holding on. To, we they we like to hold on to faith. Colin Kaepernick took a knee, and everybody was shocked he couldn't get another job in the NFL. Hmm. What are you? Yeah. White white man said, "Don't do it." He did it. it. I wasn't shocked. I mean, that's just how it is when you're in a in some somewhere. So what this you, black man just did that? He got a he got Nick, Nick Tuck. What? Somebody what? just left. Or did we lose somebody? You talking? We only got oh, one. Oh well, so it was, it was to the one that just got lost. <laughs> He got fired, and then he tried to interview somewhere else. And oh. Coach Belichick thought he was texting White oh, Brian, oh. but he was really texting Black Brian. And he told White Brian, "Congratulations on the job." No, he told Black Brian, "Congratulations," but and it was really the other one because White Brian, Black Brian, was like, "Did yeah. you mean so and so?" He was like, "Yeah, oops, my bad." That's why he should have <laughs> had Black and White, and then he would have been good. Yeah, sure, should have. I you mean, if you got two friends of different races, I mean, I don't, I don't mind putting me in your phone as black Mike. If you got a white Mike, because if you say some slick you shit to me, we got a problem. Mike just couldn't be Brian Taylor and Brian. No, no, no. Last names. no everybody get a nickname. How many? Everybody in here, I bet you know a white Mike. Yeah. Everybody know a white Mike. I don't know no white Mike. Everybody knows a white Mike. I don't. Went to school with him. Mm -hmm. Everybody know a white Mike. White Mike. So why is it bad if I if he call if somebody say black Mike? That's black Mike right there. Polish Mike, Irish Mike, <laughs> Polish Mike, Irish Mike. Yeah, should have separated. He wouldn't yeah, got it. Yes, <laughs> but the point is, ain't nobody gonna stop watching the NFL. Everybody gonna get on their high horse and be all mad, but I'm everybody gonna keep watching. You ain't never watch. <laughs> You know, you know what the colored line gonna be? It's gonna be um he was like, I ain't watching the Super Bowl, but I'm gonna watch the halftime show. It's the same goddamn thing. Like you know the game from the years and shit. No, we are watching the concert that actually has a football halftime. See, that's the bullshit. That's how everybody everybody, all your cousins are gonna be like, I ain't watching the Super Bowl, but I'm gonna watch the halftime show. No, everybody think just cause Jay-Z got something to do with the halftime show, it ain't got nothing to do with the NFL. Everybody like, was we, we gotta watch the game. always a part of the NFL, but we want to see Mary. We want exactly. I've seen enough of Mary. I don't watch none of that shit. You, mad, Mary? you Mary? You mad? You mad at Mary? Yeah, I don't, I don't mess with Monet like that. Oh, all right. Let me let y'all get y'all final thoughts because, like, I'm starving over here. Like, okay, we need a wife. There we do. 
<laughs> we taking applications. <laughs> Shit. Ooh, and you can spend the night. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Uh Mac, what's the final thoughts? I ain't really got nothing, man. Just just uh treat everybody the way you want to be treated. That's the first step to changing this world. Treat everybody with kindness and love one another. Just keep That's all I got. Them. Them. Touching them. Mayberry. You can touch me. I don't have anything. Just everybody have a good evening. Amen. Give some blessings. Linnea. I just want to ask everyone to practice self-love. And I don't mean self-love by going to the salons, getting your hair did. Even though that's cool. That's external. But we got to work internally. You, you mean know, touching yourself like an e? You want the e pill? No, not that. The rules. Not that. The rules. Hey, you talking about the rules again? Hey, Are you talking about the rules again? <laughs> no. that's like, Nea, okay. Oh, we talked about this that's last right. week. That, that's that's okay. fine. That's that's that's, that's fine. Love too. That's fine. That's 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 actually how you manifest some things too. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. But I'm just saying, tap back into that that little kid, that inner child, oh, my God. Mm. and that will bring you back. To who you truly are meant to be. Mm. Yeah. Purity. That's why I'm going skating yes. on Saturday. Uh oh. Lenado, Lenado, bust your ass, yo. Lenado. You got mega knees. I'm good. I got my, I got my skate. You got mega knees. No, 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 I ain't gonna be. Uh, uh, uh. uh. <laughs> I got, I got, I got Beulah May knees. I don't got, I don't got <laughs> mega. Who the fuck is Beulah May? Beulah <laughs> May. I can't get low. <laughs> Uncle Luke done messed me up in 92. I'm sorry. <laughs> every week we learn something new about Lene. Yeah, every every week. week. I just <laughs> Rip said that last week. Like, we are learning a lot about Lene. <laughs> uh, G. I got nothing. Call you. I got nothing. I just got nothing. I don't. I got so nothing. When you get in the house, take your temperature, bro. Make sure you're good. Yo, I'm good. I just ain't got nothing. I got nothing. Oh, you better. I told you, there's some folks that show up to the show because they want to hear you fussing and cussing. I had nothing. To, I had nothing to cuss about today. Mike showed up. That's enough to fuss and cuss. I'm sorry, baby. Wow. Damn. Sorry, baby. Kenya. I got. Kate. I don't know why, Kenya, I like to say your old name. Kenya K. Crawford, <laughs> um, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Uh, yeah, let man. the people know how they can get in touch with you um, in the Houston area. So, you know, I know you ain't doing no mobile sculpting, so please don't call next her if she... I was going like, to ask that in the comments earlier, but since it comes show up Facebook, usually I wasn't going to know it's me. Well, actually, every time I come to Baltimore, I do um, I do bring my equipment so that I can send it I'm one of you know we don't. Drop something, drop something in the box. I'm gonna be traveling from North Carolina. Oh yeah, definitely. But um, they can catch me at Live365 with K on Instagram. That'll get them connected to everything: the Mia Bella body sculpting, as well as what I do with On the Market Live. You know, th that's the best way to get in get in touch with me. And my final thoughts is: you can't have fear and faith at the same time. So choose. Either it's going to be faith or it's going to be fear, but you can't hold two thoughts. You can't do two things at the same time. So choose faith in everything that you do and believe that everything is going to work out for your good. Yeah, that was a All Professor right. Lime logo, wasn't it? Faith over fear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I thank you guys so much for allowing me to be a part of this. I appreciate it. I'll be connecting with you guys on Instagram. Yeah, yeah this, we this appreciate it. A lot of we hope you did Hope we didn't embarrass you too much. I mean, we try to be as I try. I, I'll think I'm not gonna put it. I try to be as mature as I can, but I, I'm I I can't help it sometimes. I'm just. <laughs> I had a great time. Thank you all, and you all have a great rest of your week. Thank you. you um, I don't really have much to tell you all. Um, we'll see you next week. Um, I, I can't play any music before we go tonight because I just ain't. I'm hungry. And you hungry. <laughs> That's all right. It's understood. I thought you were going to say you had technical difficulties or some shit. Yeah, it was. And, I, yeah. and I was about to say, we had a guest. I was about to say, we had a guest and we didn't have not one fuck up. Now, next week, if we don't have a guest, the show going to be fucked up in more ways than one. He's going to miss some stories. 
the headline ain't gonna be right. The backdrop gonna be fucked up. It ain't gonna be no sound oh, effects. Going out with a bang. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> exactly. Welcome back, Carter. We'll, we'll see y'all uh, next Tuesday. Uh, yes. There is no guest next Tuesday. Yeah. Watch the shit be fucked up. Watch the shit be fucked up. <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> oh, well, y'all know I won't be here next Tuesday. How old you gonna be, Matt? Um, fifty-two. Man, you ain't no fucking fifty-two. I just turned fifty-three last week, baby. You look good. To, you look good. To, huh? I thought you were sixty-one. Oh yeah, sixty-one. <laughs> no, I'll be forty-eight. I'm the That's... oldest one on the panel. Sure is. Next, next to me. Next to me. Sure is. Y'all be safe. Yes. All right, take it light, y'all. Yes. Sir. All right, y'all. Thanks, Rich. Yay! Yay!